Friends of Model Trains, welcome to a new video. Today we're again doing a short round of questions and answers. You've sent a lot of questions again, also as comments under the videos, and I'd like to answer them today in this video. I already answered the first question in the last video, but it comes up again and again. Why is the video only available in English? Why is the video only available in German? All our digital videos are available in both English and German. Simply enter Roco or Fleischmann in YouTube. That takes you to the right page, then call up the playlist, and then there's a German and an English playlist for all digital videos. So all videos are available in German or in English. The next question was, can you also use the reverse loop module for a turntable? Yes, of course. Just connect the two cables that come from the platform track to the output of the reverse loop module, and then you can also drive around the reverse loop digitally as usual, and you no longer get a short circuit at the 180 degree turn. There will also be a separate video where this topic is described in more detail with both the Fleischmann and Roco turntables for all three gauges, then I'll show you the whole thing in a bit more detail. But to keep it short, you have to connect the two cables from the platform power supply to the reverse loop module to do this. The question of what the other locomotive does was also asked, or what the other locomotives do when one of them enters the reverse loop. Do they also stop or do they travel in a different direction? No, all locomotives continue to run normally. The locomotive that enters the reverse loop continues in the set direction, and all the other vehicles in the system do. Then there was the question of how far the separation for the reverse loop can be from the turnout and how long the sensor tracks should be. Well, the separation can take place directly at the end of the turnout, but it can also take place farther away. The distance doesn't really matter. The four insulating connectors can be situated directly at the end of the turnout, that's no problem. The sensor tracks should be, let's say, about 3 cm long in the end gauge, up to 5 cm for the H0. You shouldn't make the sensor tracks much longer, because it's a short current-free section and if you're driving very slowly with a very short locomotive, if the sensor track is too long, the locomotive might stop in that section. The next question is, do you need a separate reverse loop module for each reverse loop? This can actually be answered with, yes and, no. If you can be sure that only one locomotive will enter a reserve loop at a time, you can also use a reverse loop module for two reverse loops. But if it's possible that two trains will enter a reverse loop at the same time, then you need a separate reverse loop module for each reverse loop. Otherwise, the reverse loop wouldn't know how to reverse the polarity. So in practice, it is usually the case that you need a separate reverse loop module for each reverse loop. Also the question was asked of whether you can start driving right away when you have downloaded the app and the locomotives are digitalized. Not completely. You still need a digital control center. The app is basically just the handheld controller and the locomotives have the decoder. But the commands have to get from the control app through the track to the locomotive decoder, and that is done by the digital control center. That's why you need the app or the Z21 multi-mouse and the digital control center as well as the locomotive with the decoder to operate digitally. The app and the decoder alone are not enough. Then someone wrote that wireless LAN is outdated and Bluetooth is the better wireless connection. I don't agree with that and, at the moment, there are no plans to change from the wireless LAN control. Switching to Bluetooth is not in the works. Another question was whether it's possible to copy locomotive data from one mouse to another. This is possible with the Z21 as well as with the multi-mouse amplifier 10674 or 10761. To do so, both mice must be connected to the control center, or you can also connect the cable mouse and register the wireless LAN mouse with the Z21. Then go to the master mouse, so the one where all the data is stored, and click on Send in the locomotive library. With the second mouse, Go to Receive, and then you can send all locomotive data from one mouse to the other. You just have to be careful since the multi-mouse with cable only has enough memory for 64 locomotives, and 100 can be stored on the wireless LAN mouse. So, if you want to transfer data from the wireless LAN mouse to the multi-mouse, only the first 64 are actually transferred. The other way around is no problem. This was also shown in the multi-mouse video. 
so it's a good idea to check out older videos, since you can find explanations about other topics there. Then someone asked why there is no new handheld controller, the current mouse is already pretty old. But there is one. It's our Z21 control app. It includes a handheld controller with complete graphics for both tablets and smartphones. It also has a modern graphical interface. So you still have the choice between mouse or app control. Now for a question that has also been asked several times. Can the white Z21 also use Railcom for self-registration of locomotives from other manufacturers? Railcom has nothing to do with self-registration. All versions of the Z21 are Railcom capable. That means you can program your locomotives directly through the main track, for example with POM programming. Now we come to a question that has a somewhat longer answer. I use the maintenance tool to update my control center with the latest firmware. Since then, my Lens LK100 module has not been working reliably. This problem sometimes happens because older reverse loop modules work very slowly and the Z21 in principle detects a short circuit much faster and also switches off much faster. This was already shown in the video about the maintenance tool. You can set the short circuit sensitivity of the control center, and this means that you can set how fast the Z21 should react to a short circuit. To solve this problem, simply move the controller to the left to normal, then the control will work again with the older reverse loop modules. Another question was, I bought an occupancy sensor, is should I power it with a separate booster? The occupancy sensor is basically a part of the circuit where it is installed. If the occupancy sensor is installed in the control center area, it must be powered by the control center. If the occupancy sensor is in a booster section, it is powered by the booster. That means it is not possible to have only one control center and only power the occupancy sensor with the booster. This doesn't work. The occupancy sensors that are installed in the control center area are powered by the control center. The occupancy sensors in the booster area are then powered by the booster. This question was also asked, is the data from the booster also returned to the control center? This can also be set with the maintenance tool. For example, should the short circuit message be forwarded to the control center? So should everything or only the booster area be switched off if there is a short circuit? This can be configured very easily with the maintenance tool. For the CAN bus capable boosters, for the light boosters, you can do this with the programming button on the device itself. This has also already been explained in the corresponding video. Just check out the booster videos. Then there was a question about how to transfer data from the occupancy sensor. Via PNN? No, the data is transmitted through the bus cable, either through the CAN bus cable or the R bus cable. For data transmission and power supply that powers the module and then also the corresponding track section from the module. The separated track is then powered by the module. So, PNN is only for the voltage, the entire data transmission is done with the bus cable, CAN bus or R bus. The next question was, I have an occupancy sensor and now I want to send feedback using read contacts. In the introduction, it says to pre-solder a 3300 ohm resistor. How many watts should the resistor have? I looked online at the time and ordered the cheapest resistors, which were 0.5 watt resistors. It works perfectly with these. Here is another question about the reverse loop module, when driving into the reverse loop, in principle the polarity of the voltage in the reverse loop is reversed. Does that mean that my other locomotives will also run in the opposite direction? I already explained that at the beginning of the video, you know, the locomotives continue to run just like before. Digital operation is not like analog operation, where if you change your cables, the locomotive goes in the other direction. When I turn the controller to the right, the locomotive always moves forward, no matter how the voltage is applied to the track. The locomotive continues to move normally, without jerking, without stopping. Both the locomotive in the reverse loop and the locomotives outside the reverse loop continue to run normally. Except for maybe hearing a click from the relay in the reverse loop module, you won't really notice this polarity reversal. And now one final question. Is a track diagram available for the reverse loop? We don't have a track diagram for this. 
there's a normal turnout and a bend that leads back to the turnout. If you'd like, I'd be happy to give you the article number, but actually you just have to plug in a turnout, at the right or left depending on the track circuit, and then a reverse loop is created. You also need for insulating connectors at the beginning and end of the reverse loop. There are optional cables with the rail connectors to lead the voltage back to the track. But you don't need an actual track diagram, it's just a track circuit that begins and ends in a turnout. So we've reached the end of our video. The next video will be a bit more technical, so there will be more to see. Thank you for tuning in, and see you next time.